God, I'm stuck. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do another bit of sort of celiac tips and advice. One of the things I get asked about a lot is the kind of sauces you can eat on a gluten-free diet. So I have raided my cupboard and my fridge and I thought I'd go through some of the sauces which are gluten-free and some of the things that you might not realise are gluten-free. To help me, I have downloaded the Celiac UK Scanner app. Now, one of the benefits of being a member of Celiac UK is that you can get this app as part of your membership where you can either search for products or you can scan them. Now, every time I get asked about what products are gluten-free, I always recommend people get this app. It is so helpful because you can take it around the supermarket, you can sort of take it around to people's houses or people ask you if they can give you something from their cupboard. So it's super helpful. I'm not being sponsored to say this, but I am an advocate of the charity. I think they do amazing work for people with celiac disease. So I just wanted to show you how it works whilst I kind of talk through some of the source options that you can eat. Now these kinds of foods are the things that came up a lot in the Q&A that I held the other week with a CNX specialist dietitian. If you want to see that, I will pop the link down below. Loads of you have been watching it and saying it's really helpful, so I hope that this video will be just as useful. So I'm going to start with mayonnaise and salad green. Now these are both gluten free, you might find them in the free from aisle. Now a little bit of a money saving tip, these both contain egg. If you find them in the free from aisle, don't forget the free from aisle is not just for gluten free. So they will be marked as gluten free, dairy free and egg free, but they are actually gluten free anyway. They are not necessarily marked as being gluten free on the pack. So what you need to do is check the ingredients list. Now as you can see, the allergens will be highlighted in here in bold. So this only contains egg and it contains, that's it, it contains egg. And this one contains egg and mustard. Now, this will lead me on in a second to the next thing that I want to cover. But let me show you how the scanner app works. So I will demonstrate this for you now with the salad cream. So this is my app. I have logged in. This is what my screen looks like. I'm then going to hit, if you can see, there's a little barcode here. Now, I'm going to hit the barcode and it comes up with a scanner camera. So all you need to do is scan the barcode and you will see that I've got a tick and a little smiley face. <laughs> now the smiley face means that this product is safe for me. My food preferences on here are saved as gluten free and that's it and you can edit this. So it's a good idea when you first get the app to check that you've got the right food preferences on here because obviously all I need to avoid is gluten, so that includes wheat, barley, rye, the usual sort of thing, which I will cover in another video if you guys want me to, so let me know in the comments. But this has come up with a big fat tick and this means this product is safe, so this is going back in my fridge after this video. Now I mentioned mustard. One of the things I get a lot of questions about is mustard. So mustard itself, as in the seed, is gluten free. That is absolutely fine. English mustard, the kind of yellow stuff you traditionally buy in the jar, has wheat flour in it, which is why you cannot have it if you have celiac disease. So a lot of people get confused when they see things like salad cream with mustard highlighted in bold. Mustard is actually an allergen, which means it has to be highlighted as part of the EU regulations on an ingredients list. But if there's no gluten containing ingredients, like with the salad cream, that product is fine for you to eat if you have celiac disease. It's only if it has something like wheat or barley that's highlighted that you won't be able to have it. So whilst you can't have English mustard, there are a couple of mustards that you can have. So Dijon mustard, this one here I have in my fridge. This is gluten free. I will scan it now to prove it. So once again, I've got my little camera. I'm gonna scan it. And it comes up with a smiley face. So Dijon mustard is absolutely fine. Dijon mustard is gluten free, and you'll see there's nothing on the ingredients list that's listed apart from mustard as an allergen. So that is fine. And also, we've got this French's classic yellow mustard. Now this is the kind of thing that you find in hot dogs and actually this is completely gluten free. 
it has is made with spirit vinegar again it has mustard highlighted as margin but when you scan it it comes up with a big fat thumbs up and a smiley face because this is absolutely fine for you to eat now just bear in mind while i'm going through this that obviously double check stuff because you might be watching this video a couple years after i filmed it they may have changed recipes it's always a good idea to be really, really cautious and not just take things for granted. I'm also using specifically the French's mustard and the male Dijon mustard. If you use different brands, again, they might vary. So just make sure that you double check before you try any of these. And while we're on the subject of mustard, if you like horseradish, this is generally gluten-free most of the time. Again, this is the Tesco creamed horseradish. I've put it through the scanner app and it's absolutely fine. There's nothing gluten containing on the ingredients. It's just dairy, egg and mustard and sulfites listed in bold. So this is fine. Now, one of the things a lot of people get caught out on is things like ketchup and barbecue sauce. Now, ketchup you'll find in the free from aisle. But again, another top tip, you don't need to buy free from ketchup because Heinz ketchup is actually gluten free. If I turn it around, you can see the ingredients, hopefully. No gluten on there. And to prove it, I will scan it for you now. So just scan the barcode, searching, big smiley face. Make sure you don't get caught out by spending extra money buying stuff in the free from aisle because actually this is totally fine. Now you may find things like brown sauce you need to specifically buy free from because a lot of brown sauces are not suitable for a gluten-free diet, but some are. So again, you just scan an app to check. And then the same goes for things like barbecue sauce. Some barbecue sauce is not gluten-free. Now I always use the Sainsbury's barbecue sauce. It's made with spirit vinegar, a couple of other things in there, but generally completely gluten-free. And again, let me scan this for you. Sainsbury's sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. Looks like this is an old bottle because the label's changed, but this is also gluten-free. And again, big fat smiley face, that means it's fine for you to eat. Now we're into a few other things which I find I get a lot of questions about. This is very confusing to get your head around, but I'm gonna do my best to explain. So let's talk a minute about barley. Barley is not gluten-free. And this is where the confusion is because barley is in a lot of products which are gluten-free. I know. However, bear with me here because some things like barley malt vinegar, I spent about 18 years not realizing that this is gluten-free. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna scan it for you because obviously in the ingredients is barley, barley malt, barley, 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 all the barleys. However, this is gluten free. Now you may be wondering, how on earth is this gluten free? Well, it's quite simple. In the UK, we say something is gluten free if it has less than 20 parts per million of gluten. So that is not even an amount you can see. That is such a tiny, tiny amount. And as long as people manufacture food to 20 parts per million, it can be classed as gluten-free. Something like malt vinegar, because it is made through a process of fermentation, it actually removes a lot of the gluten. And whatever is left in here, you're using such a small amount. Like you'd probably have to drink this bottle, maybe even more, I don't know, I'm freestyling. But you'd probably have to drink a lot of this for it to actually gluten you so unless you are chugging the malt vinegar a little bit on your chips is actually fine and see that UK says this on their app so it, it blew my mind but it's safe so I'd love to know actually if you're a celiac if you use vinegar because I think for me because I haven't been able to have it or thought I couldn't have it for so long I just can't bring myself to have it but actually it's completely fine and the same thing also goes for Liam Perrin's Worcester sauce. Now, I used to be obsessed with this on my cheese on toast. And we put it in bolognese sauces, we put it in so much. And then I was diagnosed with celiac and I saw barley on the ingredients list and I was like, well, I can't eat it. I was wrong. 
because if I scan this, Celiac UK says it's actually gluten free. Again, mind blown. But again, Liam Perrin's made with barley, but there's such a tiny amount. Like you would literally add a dash of this to your food and that is gonna be less than 20 parts per million. So again, although you can buy gluten-free Worcester sauce, this is actually gluten-free. Now, I know a lot of people actually are allergic to barley and that is why barley is listed and some people do follow a really, really strict zero gluten, like zero parts per million and that is completely their choice and it's completely up to you. However, Celiac UK is the guidance that I personally go by and Celiac UK has said that things like this are completely safe. So don't miss out on your cheese and toast because you can actually eat Liam Perrins, which is very, very exciting. Now, I just have a couple more things that I just want to quickly show you. Now, the first one is Branston Pickle. I never knew Branston Pickle was gluten-free. It's another one that I just assumed because it had barley for so many years that I couldn't eat it. But actually, it's fine. Now, another thing you can do on the Celiac UK app, if you don't have the product in front of you, you can actually search for it. I currently do not have Branston Pickle. I do have Branston Pickle baked beans, though. And what actually started this off is that if you look at this, it says it's gluten-free. And I was like, hang on, does this mean I can eat Branston Pickle? And I never realised this. So I'm going to search for Branston Pickle in here and what it will do is it will come up with suggestions or you can just type in the products you're looking for. Now not every single product is on here but most of the main sort of products are and if you look, look at all the pickles. Branston Pickle, gluten free. And again, I think it's because it contains barley in such a small amount that actually it's fine. So cheese and pickle, gluten free sandwiches are saved because guys, you can have Branston Pickle and Branston Pickle baked beans. Now, final thing that I want to show you, I really miss Marmite. I missed it so much. I love Marmite and I swear when I was diagnosed it used to be gluten free, but apparently it's not anymore. However, a lot of the supermarket owned versions of Marmite are. So, I have got this one, which is, I think, a Sainsbury's, yeah, reduced salt one. I mean, you don't have to get reduced salt, you could get either one. Now, Marmite has actually got a disclaimer on it that says it's not suitable for people on a gluten-free diet. This one didn't, so when I scan it, it actually comes up with a big smiley face. So there you go, if you are missing Marmite, it's worth checking on the supermarket owned versions because a lot of these are actually gluten free. So if you've been missing it, you can be reunited with your beloved Marmite. So I really hope that you guys found this helpful. I really enjoy doing videos like this. I just know it's so confusing when you're first put on a gluten free diet and even now 20 years since my diagnosis, I am still finding out things like this that I never knew I could actually eat all this time. So it's definitely worth getting the app. I'll put a link down below to where you can download it and obviously your membership to Celiac UK really helps because they fund a lot of research into Celiac disease and they give so much support. So I can't urge you enough to check it out and I think there might still be a free trial going on. So definitely give it a go. Take the app shopping with you, just go around the supermarket, scan everything as you go. It's pretty instant, it's really helpful, and it's gonna answer a lot of your questions about what you can eat. So don't forget, I will link down below to the question and answer session that I did with Christian, who is a celiac specialist dietitian. I hope you guys will find it really helpful. If you have got any questions, please always comment below, send me a message, follow me on Instagram at gfblogger. I'm always happy to film things like this if it helps or answer your questions. And now I feel like I need to go and make some cheese and toast with Liam Perrins because I'm dying to try this again. So make sure you hit subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys again without trashing my kitchen very soon.